by the time that comes around, I think everyone's going to have a good handle on what how each lender is going to be taking a look at how they make that qualified calculus. Um, so it's important to be in contact with your lender about these new rules as they come forward. Another new rule that the CFPB has put out and comes into effect January next year is the new HOPA rule. Um, and we all know that HOPA means um, uh, Home Homeownership uh, Protection Act. Um, this is generally relating to higher cost loans or higher interest rate loans. In the event that the loan is uh, a high cost loan, it has higher upfront costs, or it has a higher interest rate, then certain protections exist for the borrower on that loan. The CFPB has ramped up those protections and given the borrower greater protections, but at the same time, they've reduced the threshold for what constitutes a high cost loan. And therefore, more loans than ever before are more likely to fall into a HOPA loan. HOPA loans are difficult for a lender. The liability on a HOPA loan for a lender who lends incorrectly is very severe, and so lenders generally try to avoid loans that fall within HOPA. If we find that more loans are falling under that threshold and, and become HOPA loans, we'll also see a restriction of credit um, sometime in the future. It's all been bad news so far. There's actually some good news. <clears throat> There's actually some good news in what the CFPB has published, and those relate to the servicing rules. Um, the CFPB has written um, brand new rules that apply to uh, all mortgage loan servicers with very few exceptions. And those rules, when you stack them up, can be measured in feet um, rather than inches. Uh, and they're very, they're very strong, they're very severe, but I think they took a good look at what had gone wrong in the servicing industry over the course of the past couple of years and done their best to correct it. The new servicing rules take into account everything from a new monthly mortgage statement that every borrower will see all the way down to new foreclosure, loss mitigation, and short sale rules. And from our perspective here today, the short sale rules might be the most um, interesting for us. Um, short sale rules have been overhauled significantly. The timeline to run a short sale through has been ramped up significantly. And the responsiveness that you can expect from your lender next year on a short sale will be very different from what you've experienced over the past. The short sale offer needs to be um, acknowledged by the servicer within seven days of receipt of the offer. The, short, the servicer must provide a, quote, timely response to the short sale offer. Many are interpreting this to be measured in days rather than weeks, months, or occasionally never. Um, they are, the servicer is to set up a portal um, for you uh, or your borrower to log in to the servicer's website and check the status of what their short sale is. There will be a single point of contact for your short sale offer. So instead of talking to 15 people at the servicer, none of whom have any idea who you are or who your borrower is, you will have one individual or one team of individuals who will know the case, who will have access to all of the records related to the case, and who are empowered to make a decision concerning the short sale. So that's, that's a great improvement. Um, you will have a response to every single communication that you give to your servicer in regard to the short sale. No more sending it into the void and hoping somebody reads it. There will be no fee to process a short sale offer, and the uh, servicer must publish its rules in regard to short sale, how the offers are analyzed, which offers will qualify, which offers will not qualify. So some great changes um, in the servicing rules coming for us next year. Also, there's an end to the dual tracking. Um, dual tracking was a situation where um, the servicer would continue forward with foreclosure at the same time they were doing a short sale. There's not, not going to be that anymore. Once a short sale offer comes into play, the foreclosure action gets suspended. It cannot continue until there's been a decision on the short sale. How many times have you come up to closing and found out the property was sold yesterday? Um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's an important change. Revised uh, monthly payments, shorter timelines to get a payoff statement from your servicer. That's very important. Um, we don't get up to closing any longer and find out the payoff has changed. Um, so that's good. And payoff statements, when you get them, will now be binding. Um, so that's, that's a very important change. Appraisal delivery rules are changing too. This is a little warning. The new appraisal rules can cause a delay in your closing. So be on top of the appraisal and when it comes in. All loans must be supported by an interior appraisal of the property. The borrower must get a copy of all valuations, including BPOs, including desk reviews, including any type of valuation on the real estate at least three days prior to closing. Now you can waive that. You can waive the three-day requirement if you want, but that waiver has to be signed at least three days prior to close. You can't get up to closing and say, my appraisal's not here, let me just waive it. Um, so the three-day rule on the appraisal, very important. Escrow requirement